Since 1973, more than 160 wrongfully convicted people have been freed from death row in the United States. I don't know about you, but that's pretty much the only piece of information I need to conclude that the death penalty is outdated, inhumane, and kind of all around a dick move. But in July of 2019, Attorney General William Barr announced that the federal government, after a hiatus of more than a decade and a half, will start executing prisoners again in December. So, Merry Christmas? This shift backward comes in spite of the fact that public support from liberals and conservatives for capital punishment has significantly waned, with lawmakers on both sides of the aisle viewing the practice as irredeemably broken. Just three states, Missouri, Texas, and Virginia, are responsible for almost half of all federal death sentences. Around the world, 106 countries have outlawed capital punishment, and another 28 either have moratoriums or don't carry out death sentences. Today, the cost to taxpayers to prosecute a death case versus an imprisonment case is significantly higher. And aside from the fiscal impact, research shows that capital punishment is not a deterrent to crime, is often predicated on bad science and arbitrary factors like geography, and that the federal government disproportionately seeks the death penalty against black and brown people. But the cost factor and statistical evidence of the inherent ineffectiveness of the death penalty can pale in comparison to the knee-jerk, emotion-fueled inclination to rid the world of criminals who commit some of the most heinous acts. Right? While issuing the death penalty to child murderers or mass shooters like Dylan Roof is not likely to stir up the most blowback from the general public, these are the kinds of cases that try our convictions. Can we condemn horrific acts while agreeing that punishment by execution is also horrific? Shit just got real. But let's bring it back to William Barr and Donald Trump. When it comes to major policy shifts in Washington, there's usually a fairly explicit political motivation behind them. So why bring back the death penalty, and why now? President Trump has long supported the death penalty. And just last year, in a statement about how to combat the opioid crisis, he said that, quote, if we don't get tougher on drug dealers, we're wasting our time. That toughness includes the death penalty, end quote. The president went on to say that most of the heroin in this country comes from the southern border, and therefore we should administer harsher penalties on drug dealers. Forget that the opioid crisis is the result of prescriptions administered by doctors here in the U.S., as opposed to stemming from traffickers south of the border, but I digress. The fact that Trump is now applying his proclivity for the death penalty toward child murderers and mass shooters probably makes it more politically palatable. And like the president, since at least as far back as the Bush administration, Attorney General William Barr has also supported capital punishment. In a 1991 New York Times op-ed, Barr wrote, quote, We need a death penalty to deter and punish the most heinous federal crimes, such as terrorist killings. That penalty would send a message to drug dealers and gangs. End quote. The reinstatement of the death penalty seems to come straight out of the Trump playbook. Violence to solve social problems. Trump also invoked the death penalty as a response to the recent shootings in El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio, by insisting not on a ban for assault weapons, but that the death penalty, quote, be delivered quickly, decisively, and without years of needless delay. Needless delay? Mr. Trump, may I offer you perhaps a quick, needless reminder of the more than 160 death row inmates that have been exonerated since 1973? You remember that year, right? It was the same year Trump management was sued for discriminating against black people in the housing market. It's almost impossible to speculate whether politics has something to do with it or that this is likely some thinly veiled attempt to generate enthusiasm in the so-called Trump base. This from the guy who advocates violence against his protesters at political rallies, even offering to pay the legal fees. You're the ducking president, dude. What the duck? <sighs> Autocorrect. But let's table these political motivations or the clear evidence of an irreparable system and take a minute to acknowledge the pain that surrounds the brutal murder of a young child or that felt by families of victims of mass shootings in places like Dayton, El Paso, Charleston, and countless others. These are the kinds of atrocities that stir our primal rage and demand justice. But as the Times editorial board put it, quote, succumbing to that impulse isn't justice, it's revenge. It's a formalized, state-sanctioned version of barbaric blood feuds with a prosecutor, a robed judge, and a panel of jurors meeting out the punishment. Is appealing to our most barbaric impulses really the best way to shape policy? Duck no. 